Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll talk about a new topic about biotechnology, which is plant biotechnology. So we'll go through every sort of events that comes under biotechnology and we'll try to understand what it talks about. Moving on with this. So talking about plant biotechnology, so we'll study about the genome of plants. So there are three different types of genomes or there are three different major types of genomes under plant, which is the nuclear genome, the mitochondrial genome, and the chloroplast genome. So we'll talk about all three genomes. Firstly, we'll talk about some of the examples that uh, comes under and other varieties. So moving on with, so talking about the first genome, which is the nuclear genome. So nuclear genome and the size of the nuclear genome varies among organisms with eukaryotic cells having unreplicated DNA. These, uh, the nuclear genome content varies which is the C value. So the C value I'll be explaining in my coming videos. And it is not a very complicated thing. So the C value is the amount of unreplicated DNA that is present in the eukaryotic cells. So it may vary from around 10, uh, 10 to the power of 7 to 10 to the power of 12 base pairs. So I'll be explaining about the C value thing uh, very descriptively in my coming videos. So the next point that comes under nuclear genome, which is the size of the nuclear genome, reflects the complexity of organisms. However, this is not always true, and this is explained by the C-value paradox. So, so definitely the nuclear genome is greatly affected by the complexity of the organism. The, car, the, car, the higher the complexity of the organism, the bigger the nuclear genome it has. So also, so also don't worry, I'll be explaining about the C-value paradox and everything related with C-value. So moving on with this. So the higher plants shows huge variation in chromosomal size and numbers, but complexity of the genome and the number of genes are same. Also, the, also this is due to the presence of majority of the non-coding regions and repeat regions in the nuclear genome. So there are number of repeats or the unnecessary part that is present in the nuclear genome. So some of the unnecessary parts that may be present in a nuclear genome that uh, adds to the size of the nuclear genome, which are the introns, presence of introns, uh, tandem repeats and these tandem repeats are associated with particular locations and primarily compose the centromeric and telomeric regions of chromosomes. Also lastly, it contains genomic wide repeats which are tend to bound throughout the genomes. So these three are, uh, these three uh, things are present in the nuclear genome that adds to the size that is, that is extra to the size of the nuclear genome, which has no sort of characteristic features. So moving on with this. So also much of the difference in the genome size between plant is due to the amount of repetitive DNA present in the genome. So as I said, due to the presence of the unnecessary regions or the repetitive DNA that is present in the genome, a lot of size gain is obtained in the nuclear genome. Also changes in the nuclear uh, genome size can be frequent uh, events during evolution, but these changes not appear to be associated with large changes in gene content and gene order. Also this conservation of gene content and order is termed as collinearity. So also this is a very important thing that you might need to learn or might like to remember, which is the conservation of gene content and order is known as collinearity. So also uh, another term for this is synentry, synentry, sorry, pardon. So synentry is a term also used for collinearity and homology. So some of the examples that we have here is the Arabidopsis or dicot and rice, which is monocot in nature, which diverged from a common ancestor about 200 million years ago. And yet there is low but detectable syn uh, synentry between two species. So there is some sort of similarity between organisms or uh, between different sort of species. So here we see a dicot and monocot do have certain sort of similarity between the two. So moving on with this. So we talk about some of the genome size. We'll try to compare about different sort of uh, genome size between species. So here we see these uh, the relative genome size as you can see on the y axis and on the x-axis, there are all the species that are present. So the biggest uh, genomic size that is observed from this graph is the wheat. So as you can see, the biggest pillar here is the wheat, 
then we have barley we have garden peas we have humans we have us definitely we have potatoes tomatoes oil seeds so these have relatively smaller genomic size rather wheat has a huge genomic size due to the presence of the maybe due to the presence of uh, our relative regions and lots of com uh, complexity that may be present in a wheat wheat so depending on the species uh, the, uh, the relative genomic size differs so moving on with this so talking about the second type of genome which is the chloroplast genome so chloroplast genome is a double stranded circular dna molecule located in the stroma of chloroplast so it is present in the stroma of chloroplast the double stranded circular dna molecule which we all know it and we have studied in the junior class about photosynthesis and all so we must know the uh, location of chloroplast which is in the stroma of so definitely so moving in this uh, direction so the chloroplast genomes are highly conserved among the plant species also more than one copy of gene in each chloroplast exact number varies during development so more than one copy of genome in each chloroplast is present also mesophyll cells of young leaves contain 100 copies of chloroplast genomes so these were some general information so let's just talk about some of its size and differences with other genomes also most genome uh, chloroplast genomes are between 120 to 160 kb in size and contain about 142 120 to 140 genes also most of these genes present in the chloroplast genome are involved in protein synthesis so most of them are involved in protein synthesis also majority of the gene encoding proteins for photosynthesis are located in the nucleus and transported to the chloroplast so these are some of the gene encoding proteins for for, for uh, photosynthesis and also this is a very important point which is highlighted in red so all of these uh, genes that are required in protein synthesis are majorly located in uh, nucleus pardon so these are located in nucleus and then and then these are transported to chloroplast for further actions so yeah so, with this so talking about the maize chloroplast genome map as you can see this is a very very complex map and that is that is the reason why it has a big size so as you can see the size of maize chloroplast genome is about 140387 bp that's very big and it has two inverted repeats which is ira and irb and these repeats are separated by small and large single copy regions so this is a maize chloroplast genome map also we have the same as maize nuclear genome map and also the maize uh, uh, genome differs with different sort of regions such as the maize chloroplast genome is maybe might be slightly bigger than the maize nuclear genome so maize has a different sort of genomes that are present in different regions as we know so as you can see here the sizes of different sort of genomes so in this case so for this chloroplast region so the tobacco has this biggest uh, genomic map or the size so it says 155844 bases whereas maize is the second highest among the sizes and then we have the list Moving on with this so these are some of the gene production function acronyms and number of genes in chloroplast genomes so this is the number of genes that might that might uh, that is present in the entire chloroplast genome in a particular species Moving on with this you you may pause the video and check it around for each and every particular part also talking about some other genomes which we have which is the mitochondrial genome so there so in our body we have different sort of genomes same applies to the species so under species we have three major types of genomes so one we have studied is the nuclear genome and lastly we studied is the chloroplast genome and now we are going to study about mitochondrial genome so talking about the mitochondrial genomes the plant mitochondrial genome which is much larger than those of mammals and yeasts so this is we can you can say is the biggest genome that is present in every individual other than the as compared to nuclear and chloroplast also size varies according to species and its variability may be large due to large uh, large size of non coding regions so the variability and the size may differ because of the presence of non repetitive or non coding regions also this is a very important point so the maize mitochondrial genome is much larger than the chloroplast genome but contains far fewer genes so the gene number is very less 
in the mitochondrial genome as compared to chloroplast genome, but the size is bigger than that of chloroplast genome. All right, so the size matters definitely. Also, most of the genes are involved in protein synthesis or respiratory electron transport. So these have major functions in this protein synthesis and electron transport system. Also, plant mitochondrial DNA also contains chloroplast DNA, which we know as the promiscuous DNA. So the plant mitochondrial DNA uh, contains the chloroplast DNA, which is which we collectively know as the promiscuous DNA. So you can easily understand how big is the mitochondrial DNA. So the uh, so mitochondrial DNA is very big, so as that it can uh, engulf or engulf the chloroplast DNA in between in itself so that come uh, so the entire thing which we know as the promiscuous dna so the plant or uh, the uh, mitochondrial dna is bigger than the chloroplast dna and collectively known as promiscuous dna so here we have another example for you so which is the arabidopsis thaliana so which is we known as the which we know as the model species so this is the species that is generally used for experimentation for genomes for observing the genes for every genome, for every different parts of genomes. Pardon. So why this species is used as a model species? So there are different sorts of theories or assumptions that are based on the scientists. So here we have, so why this species is always used as a model species? So because it has a small, short life cycle and small stature, and it produces large number of offsprings, all right? Also, it has the smallest genomes in higher plants, which is about 125 MB, and it is easily transformed and manipulated. So, due to its easy use and size, definitely this is this acts as a model species for every sort of experimentation of genome-related objects. So, let's just keep this video till here. I'll be back with another video very soon. I will talk about more about the subject or topic about plant biotechnology. So, stay tuned. And thanks for watching this video.